Hey, welcome to a streamer to Vince. Today, we are going to be talking about the big one. California is known for its landscape and vibrant cities, and it has been facing an imminent danger looming for centuries, a massive earthquake. The San Andreas Fault stretching along the central west coast of North America is one of the most active faults on the Rim of Fire. It lies between the North American Plate, which is moving south, and the Pacific Plate, which is moving north and it is considered long overdue for a significant seismic event. While it's impossible to predict the exact timing of the big one, there are factors that increase the likelihood of it happening in the near future. The movie San Andreas depicts this chaos in cinematic form showing the most extreme circumstances. There are several factors that make these events more likely to occur within the coming years. The sun, a magnetic field, climate, and timing. We are now entering the climax of Solar Maximum 25. This Solar Maximum is predicted to peak mid-2024 and will remain high until the end of 2025. Current prediction models are showing this could be the strongest cycle since recording began in 1755. The sun goes through a cycle every 11 years resulting in a polarity reversal. Previously, it was believed Solar Maximum 25 would be relatively subdued, similar to the last Solar Maximum. Now solar scientists admit they were significantly off target and we are entering a maximum much sooner than expected. The higher the number of sunspots, the greater the risk of solar storms. During a maximum, solar flares and coronal mass ejections become more frequent, hurling energy and matter throughout our solar system. If this plasma is directed towards Earth, we will witness a light show of spectacular auroras. But if the solar storm is severe enough, it can also interfere with power grids, aircraft, navigation, and even satellites. NASA, NOAA, and other agencies are on high alert, providing monthly forecast updates as they monitor the significant changes being seen. Experts are urging people to be aware and be ready to take action. Communities worldwide are gearing up to mitigate the impacts of the solar upheaval. The solar cycle ahead of schedule and stronger than predicted. I want to share with you a couple of scholarly articles. I will include the link in the description. These articles outline the possibility of the lurid current modulating seismic activity. Solar activity as a triggering mechanism for earthquakes. Solar activity is indicated by sunspots, radio noise, and geomagnetic indices plays a significant but by no means exclusive role in the triggering of earthquakes. Maximum quake frequency occurs at times of moderately high and fluctuating solar activity. Terrestrial solar flare effects, which are the actual coupling mechanisms which trigger quakes, appear to be either abrupt accelerations in the Earth's angular velocity or surges of telluric currents in the Earth's crust. Telluric currents generated by solar flare radiation, physical model and numerical estimations. The current studies of solar terrestrial relations and possible impact of space weather on seismic activity are based on statistical analysis without detailed consideration of possible physical mechanism that result in fuzzy and contradictory conclusions. We propose to consider a hypothesis of electromagnetic earthquake triggering by a sharp rise of telluric currents in lithosphere, including crust faults due to interaction of solar flare X-ray radiation with ionosphere-atmosphere-lithosphere system resulted in a rise of telluric currents in the crust faults. This hypothesis is based on field and laboratory experiments carried out in Russia within the last 40 years and clearly demonstrated a possibility of earthquake triggering by electric current injected into the fault. We developed a mathematical model and computer code for numerical estimations of telluric currents generated by solar flare radiations. The obtained numerical results demonstrate that solar flares can cause variation in the density of telluric currents in the crust faults, comparable to the current densities generated in the Earth's crust by artificial pulse power sources capable of triggering earthquakes. Consequently, the triggering of seismic events is possible not only by artificial sources of electric current, but also by ionospheric disturbances caused by strong solar flares. Could it be possible that the sun is playing a role on this seismic cycle here on Earth? Does this make it more likely that the San Andreas Fault is about to unleash the big one? With this information in mind, let's dive into recent changes in the Earth's magnetic field. Earth itself is a huge magnet. This animation depicts Earth's magnetic field lines as viewed from outer space. This is Earth's magnetosphere. Its magnetic field is similar to that of a bar magnet. 
But you'll notice that the field lines far away from Earth, they bend away. This is due to the ionized solar wind from the sun that encounters Earth. As we discuss elsewhere, Earth's magnetosphere acts as a shield, protecting us from this energetic solar wind. Now, they have surely made countless new updates that are not public. But for now, let's break down what is just the latest in the long line of evidence we've covered showing that the government knows exactly what is happening to this planet, the magnetic pole shift. First up, the confirmation that as of the 2010 magnetic field updates, Earth's field has weakened 15%, meaning that by now, in 2024, we're likely down 25 to 30%. This is confirmed by their acknowledgement of what geophysicists and the European Swarm mission said, that the magnetic pole shift and weakening of the field is progressing 10 times faster than previously believed, and that the field is in fact undergoing a significant shift. I remember when the Swarm mission director said exactly this over a decade ago, that we are seeing the stages unfold of the next magnetic pole reversal of this planet, with the primary concern being the increased interaction between the solar wind and Earth's atmosphere and biosphere, our living world. There is acknowledgement that this is an unmitigated disaster at a global scale, worse than earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, hurricanes, pretty much every other natural phenomenon with the lone exception being a planet-killing asteroid impact. During these magnetic events, the field drops by 90%, down to only 10% of its normal strength, We've seen that several other places as well in the scientific research. This presents many risks to our planet, and they began here with the normal technological risk from space weather events, moving on to how it can impact the atmosphere, infrastructure, and cause the death of many humans. I caught very few mistakes in this paper, but this is one of them. When he's discussing the geomagnetic excursions, they're described as being two or three of them per million years. Well, that's just plain unacceptable. There have been eight such events, magnetic excursions, in just the last 60,000 years, including the one that we're entering now. And while it is very challenging to spot these when you look further back in time, we do know of two major ones in the previous 100,000 years. So the idea that there's only two or three of them per million years should be absolutely ignored. But right after that, the paper took our side in one of the most important debates in this field, that these events can happen very quickly. Many scientists today are still trying to tell people that these events all take thousands of years, but that is not what the newest and most robust data is saying. We have evidence for several of these events that took place in less than a hundred years. We're already more than a hundred years into this one, which means that in theory, it could happen at any time. The magnetic field plays a critical role in Earth's sun dynamic, and evidence suggests it's losing strength. Could the surge of energy into the Lurid current lead to the civilization of Earth crust and faults, including the San Andreas? Another significant factor influences the potential for the big one. Is climate change. Regardless of what anyone thinks, climate change is a pressing issue that have resulted in extreme weather patterns in California. From severe drought and wildfires to heavy rain and flooding, California has experienced it all. Let's explore how these changes could potentially impact the San Andreas Fault. The melting of glaciers can reduce pressure on the Earth's crust, potentially triggering earthquakes in areas that were previously stable. Glacial melting can indeed be linked to increased seismic activity, primarily through a process called isostatic rebound. Here's how it works. Glaciers exert immense pressure on the Earth's crust. As they melt due to climate change, this weight is reduced. When the pressure is reduced, the crust begins to slowly rise and adjust. This rebound can cause stress in the Earth's crust, leading to fault slipping and earthquakes. Melting glaciers can also contribute to landslides and other geological instabilities, which can trigger local seismic events. Number 2. Heavy Rainfall Heavy rainfall can lead to soil saturation, increasing the weight on fault lines and possibly contributing to their movement. Heavy rainfall can saturate the ground and increase water pressure in faults. This added pressure may reduce friction along fault lines, potentially triggering earthquakes. Number three, landslides. Intense rainfall can lead to landslides, 
which can create localized seismic activity as the ground shifts and adjusts. Landslides themselves don't typically cause earthquakes in the same way that tectonic movements do, but they can trigger small seismic events under certain conditions. When a large amount of earth and rock suddenly shifts, it can create localized seismic waves, similar to a small earthquake. If a landslide occurs near a fault line, the movement might relieve stress on the fault or conversely add stress that could trigger an earthquake. Landslides often happen after heavy rainfall or snowmelt, which can increase pressure in the ground. This condition may contribute to fault movement. Number four, groundwater recharge. Increased rainfall can elevate groundwater levels, affecting the stability of underground structures and potentially leading to subsurface movements. Groundwater recharge can influence seismic activity, particularly through a few key mechanisms. When groundwater levels rise, it can increase pore pressure within the rocks and sediments. This added pressure can reduce friction along fault lines, potentially triggering an earthquake. Changes in groundwater levels can affect the stability of faults. If the groundwater saturates certain areas, it may lead to a loss of cohesion in the rocks, making them more prone to slip. In some cases, the injection of water into the ground for purposes like aquifer recharge can lead to induced seismicity, where human activities contribute to earthquakes. Number five, temperature changes. Variations in temperature can affect the physical properties of rocks, potentially influencing fault behavior. As temperatures fluctuate, materials in the Earth's crust can expand and contract. This process may create stress along faults or fractures, potentially triggering small earthquakes. In volcanic regions, temperature changes can affect the behavior of magma and hydrothermal systems. If temperatures rise significantly, it could lead to increased pressure and possible volcanic activity, which could be associated with earthquakes. Temperature changes can alter the physical properties of soil and rock, affecting stability and potentially contributing to landslides or fault movement. From landslide to extreme temperatures and precipitation, California is experiencing how devastating the effect of climate change can be. Will these changes lead to the imminent destabilization of the San Andreas Fault? With that in mind, let's get into the topic of time. Scientists say the San Andreas is overdue for a major earthquake. By examining records of past earthquakes, scientists identify cycles or patterns. The time between significant quakes provides clues about the potential timing of future events. The San Andreas Fault has a history of major earthquakes, with significant events occurring roughly every 150 years on average in certain segments. The fact is, there has not been a major release of stresses in the southern portion of the San Andreas Fault System since 1857 indicates that the big one is imminent. In 1906, some of the stresses were catastrophically released in the San Francisco Bay Area in a 7.8 magnitude event, and again in Northern California in 1989 during the 6.9 magnitude that struck Loma Prieta. Events of this magnitude, however, have not occurred along the San Andreas Fault in the south of the state, leading scientists to speculate that one is imminent, and given the amount of stress that might actually have accumulated, when it arrives, it will be the big one. Today we have covered four factors that can trigger the San Andreas Fault. As we've seen, the sun, the magnetic field, climate change, and time play a role in unleashing the big one. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when, and numerous scientists agree this fault is locked and loaded. Information is the most valuable tool of being prepared. Will you be ready?